Alright, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nexus, and as always, I am proud to present to you another Ask Us Anything with the Wolves of Alt Street. Today, we are presenting Artipus, which is a fascinating, artificially intelligent NFT series that makes art. And I think that's very interesting. Before we get started, as always, I want to let everyone know that everything that you are hearing on this program is not to be construed as financial advice, as I am not your personal financial advisor. I am just a guy with opinions about crypto projects. As such, anything you hear will also be the opinions of the people speaking and not necessarily the representatives or opinions that rather will not be representative of all of the opinions of my of the wolves of alt street or the team of artipus and with that said welcome everyone i would like to ask you please to tell us a little bit about yourselves and anything you'd like us to know to get to know you guys as a team yeah thanks so much for that introduction um I appreciate the, the disclaimer. That's a new <laughs> one. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, hey guys, we're Artipus. Uh, I uh, I guess I'll give our, our you know project a little bit of an introduction and then I'll introduce the team members. Uh, I'm Caleb. I'm the CMO of this company. Uh, and right now my team is building uh, an interoperable AI layered infrastructure compatible with NFTs. Uh, upon fusion with our AI uh, layer, NFTs will be granted both interactive and generative AI utility. This results and creates the first generation of AI artists on Ethereum, true AI, not just fake generative, like we've seen so much. Oh, yes. uh, we're aware of similar projects, but we are confident that we're taking an innovative and disruptive approach uh, to adding AI to NFTs. Uh, we have these AI utilities deployed on our website and are ready for testing and demonstrations. So bear with us as we give you a lot of information right now. Uh, everything becomes a lot more clear once you're able to actually, you know, put your hand to the grindstone and play with this stuff a little bit. Uh, so we are going to launch Artipus NFT uh, that runs on the Jiro Jiro layer. Uh, that is the interoperable AI layer uh, in early May. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and then I'll tell you a little bit about uh, John, who is uh, appears as Artipus. Uh, he's our CEO, and uh, Chris, our CTO. I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves as well. Uh, I'm Caleb. I'm born and raised in New York. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, and actually, New York is where I met John uh, many, many, many years ago. Uh, too many to really, you know, say because it makes me feel older than i'd like to be uh but i went to school for uh for business uh, and communications uh and uh i graduated in 2021 over the last four years i've had the pleasure of uh focusing on on startup launches uh that's been a passion of mine i've really enjoyed getting into young and new companies uh and uh taking every advantage of the opportunity you have there for creation and growth uh, as opposed to the more traditional route. About three years ago, I started to get really into crypto simply as a way to diversify my assets. Uh, my sister is a, is a VP at a bank here in New York, and she always stressed the importance of not keeping all your eggs in one basket. So what started as a pure investment strategy for me has turned into a hobby uh, and a passion that I've chosen to follow full time. Uh, and six months ago, uh, John signed me up uh, to go full time for Artipus and for Jiro Jiro. Uh, so that's just a little bit more about me. I don't want to talk too much about myself because there are much smarter people on this team. Uh, and I will allow those two to introduce themselves to you now. So I guess let's start with John. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Caleb. Hey, guys, I'm John. Uh, I'm the CEO of Jiro Jiro AI. Uh, something quick about myself. I've worked at Stanford Cryptic Labs back in 2018, uh, doing a lot of research and investments. And afterwards, I worked as a strategy in a publicly listed AI firm. And um, yeah, now I'm just here combining two years of my expertise uh, doing this AI plus NFT thing. Um, Chris on our team is the CTO. He knows a lot. Yeah, we could uh, jump to Chris. Hey, hey guys, uh, this is Chris. Uh, I'm the CTO of the company. Um, so I went to Johns Hopkins for, for undergrad. 
um, working in computer science and after college, um, I worked in an AI company in the US, uh, mostly working on AI data analysis, uh, helping a lot of small businesses and doing uh, data analysis to improve their performance uh, in the market uh, using AI technologies. And uh, after about three years, I decided to do a PhD in AI um, in Princeton. I'm at Princeton right now, uh, third year. And my current research uh, focuses on meta reinforcement learning. Uh, so reinforcement learning is to teach like artificial intelligent agents uh, to learn things. Um, and the meta reinforcement learning is to teach these agents learn to do, learn to learn new things. So once I teach them how to learn new things, they can learn by them own uh, uh, later uh, in their life. Um, so at the end of last year, I joined my colleagues. Uh, yeah, John and Caleb, uh, and, yep. uh, and I joined the, the CTO uh, as a CTO of the company where I oversee the technology, especially the AL part. Uh, it's really been a fun journey to uh, like apply what I've been doing in uh, in research uh, to this company and I'm really very excited to tell you more about it yeah uh, back to Caleb yeah thanks so much for that introduction so uh, just a little bit of a, a structure for this uh, for this AMA we usually share our uh, our deck uh, and run through a little bit of a presentation but we were interested in having uh, a little bit more uh, jovial of AMA today uh, we really want uh, you guys in the audience to be able to ask questions and, and oh, yeah. you know get a sense of the project we have going on. So instead of going through this pitch, uh, like how we always do it, you know, if you're interested in that, uh, join another one later. We always do them on Telegram. But we're going to shorten that presentation uh, and we're going to have uh, just a quick run through of the the product, uh, the uh, the marketing strategy, a little bit of the AI components that make this possible, and then our future roadmap. Uh, and then we'll open it up to questions. So I'm going to pass it to John just so he can uh, give you guys a little bit more information uh, that uh, that would be help for, helpful for you to really understand this project. So take it away, John. All right. Uh, I'll first tell uh, the opportunity of why, why we're doing uh, You know, we see the, the NFT markets. Then... All right, John, you're breaking up a little bit. Is it, oh, make sure everything's problem. good with your connection. Okay. Um, is this better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, back to what I was saying about the market, you know, we are still expanding market, but, with the, but then with a gradual recovery in rationality, uh, where people will be asking for more NFT functionalities and NFT utilities. So, with AI as the underlying AI layer, we will introduce interactive, generative, and evolving AI models, bridging utilities and transforming NFTs to intelligent beings. So uh, this AI layer will actually be interoperable, uh, which means that uh, not only does our NFT uh, have the ability to use this layer, every other NFT communities that are in collaboration will also be used we also be able to use our JoJo.ai to become uh, to grant their NFT the ability of interaction and generation, uh, which will help their NFT to become an AI artist. Um, and lastly, with more communities in collaboration, we're hoping to uh, create this creator economy uh, where a lot of NFTs will become AI artists through our JoJo.ai, which will then unleash new ways of NFT engagement and synergize the collective value of each NFT. Um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, in a very big picture of what we're doing. And we could go to Chris now for some details of our, like how we're doing this uh, technically. Okay. Well, I usually will start out uh, driving this myself as much as I can because I'll write out a set of questions that I have that should guide the conversation yeah. toward, um, well, enlightening us all about your project, of course. So to, in, just to break the ice, I wanted to ask you guys in particular, since your project is about creating art and entertainment products via AI generation, 
what kinds of art and music do you guys prefer personally above others? I think I think Caleb just got disconnected. Shall we shall we give it a sec? Yeah, sure, you can give it a sec. That's no problem. But in the meantime, if you guys want to talk about your favorite music and movies and uh, artwork, I would also appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I personally organized the band myself, uh, so I did a bachelor in memory. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so um, I play guitar myself. I started playing guitar since like hmm. back in middle school. And uh, so guitar is one of my things. And so I guess like for this Artipus, uh just something about about the utilities on uh, our octopus are divided into two categories. Uh, one category painting octopus and the category is the musician octopus. So for for painting octopus, uh, they they have a range of skill from uh, knowing how to do paintings in styles of expressionism, abstractionism, uh, impressionism, and that call so like a lot of like painting styles and for our musician octopus um, they know how to play uh, the genres of blues meadows um, a lot of e-rock and within each genre each octopus will then know how to play either guitar strings uh, bass just you, you know like a lot of musical instruments that each uh, that like our musician octopus don't play, and each octopus could then collide with each other. Yeah, that's that's like a brief connection between between octopus and, and style. Okay. Yep. So so is each uh, is are the different music styles available as well? Can we expect like hip hop octopuses or classical Mozart yeah, sure. octopuses? <laughs> Okay. I get a kind of a Lemmings meets anime vibe from the Artipus NFTs themselves. Uh, I'm curious, what was the inspiration for the style of art that the that the little artists have? Uh, yeah, right. there's actually a background story behind this. Uh, so, uh, our team thought that you know, like nowadays, like coders are contributing open source codes. But then, you know, like a lot of us are just taking things for granted. So that resulted in the deletion of a lot of open source algorithms or open source database, right? Uh, so uh, in our background story, we have this we have this government that prevented everyone from uh, doing art because uh, one day scientists just decided to delete all the open source codes and open source algorithms which really uh put the technology uh to a stop uh so so the government in order to bring back the investment of technology prevented everyone from performing artwork and with the intention of putting all the memory to do research doing coding and etc so uh, in that world there's still a bunch of very passionate artists who want to perform art. So they gathered together and then they, you know, they decided why not, you know, why don't we do, do, you know, do art in metaverse, still perform artworks, right? Um, but then, but then they needed to come up with a name uh, to, to represent themselves. Initially, they started with artists, but then, you know, through the word of mouth, um, this world, this word slowly transformed to octopus. Uh, or or artifice. yeah right so so everyone appeared uh, in a metaverse with with like the met with like the octopus here uh, so so that's like a sign of our AI artists and uh, and yeah that was just a very brief background story. okay that's your background lore for the sort of artipus metaverse as it were okay. 
how did you guys come up with this idea specifically? The the idea that NFTs tied to artificial intelligence will have all of these interactive features. I personally think that's a really unique take on the technology, given that you're focusing on the creative a bit more than on the financial. Right. Uh, I guess I could uh, say something and then Chris could jump in like the actual AI thing. Yeah. Uh, because we're seeing an AI from myself, uh, you know, like we're starting to realize how we don't really, as users or as consumers, we don't really own anything uh, from, you know, the whole strings of data, algorithm, model. These are all owned by, you know, Netflix, uh, Facebook, or, or Meta, or, and, and Google. Uh, like, as consumers, we're... We don't have any. We don't have anything in our ownership. You know, like they use our data to train their model, uh, which will then help them to profit. Uh, so, with that being said, uh, owning an actual intelligent being is not possible in Web two. So, through the means of NFT, we think NFT should mean a lot, just PFP. Uh, we're hoping to bring actual utilities, hoping to uh, enable everyone to behold or to own an intelligent being through the means of NFT. Yeah, that's that's our like initiative. Uh, and I guess Chris could, could add on to that. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I think there are two more things I can emphasize a bit more. Uh, the first thing is about the evolving ability of Octopus. Um, so we envision that. Uh, so like Holder purchases uh, our Octopus NFT, it's not just a single NFT, but it's more like a like a framework uh, that can keep uh, collecting data from the from the holder and uh, learn from the holder's preferences and it caters more and more to the holder's uh, preference uh, through this constant interaction and the constantly involving itself. Uh, so at the core of our uh, AI module, uh, we have this uh, general module that kind of distills the the common human knowledge uh, from this constant uh, interactions. So through more and more interactions, it will become more and more intelligent and uh, generates uh, like new artwork uh, or creations that that caters to the to the preference of the of the holders. And uh, the other thing I want to emphasize is um, this AI module, this AI framework is readily can be readily plugged into like each nft and giving like unique uh, persona to uh, to each nfts for interaction and uh, uh, generating new uh, artworks um, so we can turn and every nft into an ai artist and i think this is something we think really unique to our uh, to our framework yeah and sorry i got a uh, i got a uh, put on a timeout i think uh when I was trying to share our Discord uh, link, I had oh oh them. yes, apologies oh. for that. No yeah. no 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 problem, uh, no problem. But I just uh, I heard the tail end of your question and I heard uh, John and Chris's answers and I just wanted to uh, say a little something as well. So we uh, and I assume most creators in this space believe in the future of commerce being directly tied to NFTs, right? We're we're hoping that this can be a, a token used not just in, in the crypto space or the Web3 space, but to buy real estate and to buy cars, right? We want this mass adoption uh, to become commonplace. One of the biggest uh, uh, problems with people who are interested in getting into this space is uh, the hype that's generated uh, on, you know, financial sites like Forbes talking about oh this moon bridge just sold for a hundred thousand dollars blah 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 this is this is so ridiculous but the the problem is there's there's a very hard entry for most people to get into this space right like people automatically assume that everything related to an NFT is just a, a long shot gambling odd you're playing with your money and you and you're hoping that Somehow, if you buy this random picture, it'll it'll you know be an investment that will will generate you monetary wealth in the future. There's no utility and there's no ability for creation. We see Artipus as as a uh, truly the next step in NFTs. This is what we believe the entire space is going to shift to in the future: generative utility. 
uh, because we are already familiar with the frustrations we're all feeling with, you know, basically these pro products like uh, like Moonbirds, for example, like pumping themselves up, being bought at, at ridiculously high valuations by other people inside the circle and then being unloaded onto us, people who want to get into the space, right? This is like the, the most toxic part of this entire space. Our NFTs allow for utility. You are able to own an NFT that can create more utility, right? Because you're not just owning a picture, you're, you're owning a creator in that sense. So it really reduces the barrier for 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 entry into this space and it allows for even the newest, you know, adapter of, of crypto and uh, of NFTs to to have some sort of power in their own hands to to generate their own wealth. So uh, that's just something I, I wanted to to say, not on the technical side of things, but more of a passion of, of why, you know, we we really care about this this product. Anyway, back to you. How did you guys come up with this idea? Specifically, the idea of an NFT that's tied to an AI that has all of this interactive interactivity. Uh, I, I just love that. Like, how did you come up with this? Yeah, that's a John. John is the is the spearheader. So, John, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you answer that one. We initially just have a. So, one of our other founder, he has a. A, uh, an AI firm. Uh, so we initially already had the technology, we have all the algorithms. So we're just wondering, you know, why not just combine these algorithms for NFT projects? Uh, so we, we we honestly already had the uh, had the coding done uh, and just wanted to, you know, uh, right. test the water. So just, just in case John cut out a little bit, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, one of our founders is his whole life is AI and developing AI. Uh, and this project, Jiro Jiro, the code that everything relies on was created by him. Uh, and, you know, it kind of was just a case of right place, right time, because our team was feeling frustrated before we were a team. We were all feeling frustrated about lack of utility. Uh, we had this generative AI that could provide that, you know, fill that hole. Uh, and, you know, sometimes when you get two and two, you just, you got to smash them together and, and, you know, take your chance. So that's kind of, it was, it was a little bit of, uh, of luck and a little bit of hard work and a little bit of good timing. How does the interactive element of the art of his NFT work? For instance, how do I engage with the NFT and how does the artwork generation process work? Um, I can, uh, touch on these. Uh, so with the interactive model, uh, if you come to our website as an owner of Artifus, uh, you could have a real-time 24-7 uh, text-to-text conversation. So like you could chat with your Artifus and each Artifus is given a unique persona so that when you're chatting with your Artifus, you can realize, oh, maybe this is someone who started playing guitar. Um, back in middle school, and, and you know, it's, let's say, for example, uh, so like there's actual uh, persona packed to each artifice, and when you're chatting with them or chatting with the artifice, you can slowly find out the type of stories. Of the so like that's the first thing, and then the second thing, how uh, is the generative uh, model shown? Also on our website, uh, you could press. Uh, two buttons. One button is individually create artwork. So after you press that button, then either our AI music or our, our AI painting model will generate a painting or music. And then the second button that you can press is uh, create artwork collaboratively. So on that site, you'll be able to see other artifacts that's able to be collaborated with. So you could collect on their profile pics and then collect create uh to get a joint artwork creation yeah okay um it's let's say i uh the out al the algorithmically generated nft space we've we've touched on that a bit uh a key selling point that differentiates your project is of course the ability to use AI artistry yourself as a holder, the generative function here. 
Will the secondary artworks be able to be sold or traded themselves, or are they tied to the artist that produced them? Uh, that's a good question. Yes, uh, they will be able to uh, be sold on marketplaces. Uh, not only will they be able to be sold on marketplaces, uh, artifacts can actually consume artworks as well. So let's say that uh, we collaboratively made, uh, let's say, a painting, right? uh, and I could either choose to sell it on marketplace as a an artwork, or I could consume it by by exchanging that to our utility token and use that utility token to upgrade my AI model. So our AI model, as Chris uh, said, is evolving. Uh, so that uh, uh, if we were to use our utility token, we could upgrade our AI model to make our octopus more intelligent uh, in the sense of creating better artworks or becoming more intelligent when, when changing the 21st century. Okay. Interesting. Let's say I mint an artist and I ask that artist to produce a work and I don't like it. Is the AI personality aspect of the NFT fungible enough itself that I could say sour my relationship with my artist by being overly critical of their abilities? Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> um I guess, uh, I guess try create more because, because the more, um, uh, this works like this, right? So if more people use our thing, then we get more, more data that could be fed back to our algorithm, which will make the whole thing smarter. So simply by doing more creations, that's going to help the whole thing. Uh, that's going to help to, uh, generate more data for our algorithm, which will then help to feedback values to, to our consumers or voters to make the whole thing uh, more intelligent by the experience. Yeah, so back to your question, if you don't like the artwork, um, I guess simply just create another one because mm -hmm. each one is created by algorithms and, um, you know, not a single artwork has ever existed in this world before. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess my, my final follow-up question to that would be, say an, a piece of art is created as a collaboration between two different owners who own two different artipuses who in that situation owns the art that is a great question uh, if let's say holder a initiates uh, a collaboration with holder b then holder a will will get the ownership of that thing so so the initiator of the collaboration owns the art and if holder b wanted to own art that was collaborated with holder a they would have to initiate one themselves yes yes and each time when we initiate uh there's a game by concept so uh we do have uh we do set rules for, for creations uh holders what need to gather in-game assets uh so through in the in-game assets we limit the amount they can initiate creations, uh, but but I guess if you if you train them, you can get a lot more game assets to to increase the number of creations that you want to make. Interesting. Well, that concludes my docket of questions, and without wasting any time, we're kicking it straight to the community. Our first question comes from Hola Kondo, who asks, as a very experienced team. Due to content emerging on your website, I wonder why there isn't a LinkedIn page to make the team seem fully doxxed. Would you guys consider opening a LinkedIn page? Uh, we are uh, doxxed to capitals uh, right now and uh, collaborative communities. Uh, since we're building an AI layer, we also we are also raising funds right now. Uh, we've been talking to a lot Telegram. Um, so we John, you're can, out. can you repeat that last sentence? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So on, uh, I'm just saying we are dogs to the capitals. And we'll get uh, KYC payment. So uh, with that being said, we are also making a new website, a new UI. Um, we're switching the whole thing up. So in in our new UI, we'll include all the team infos. All right. Cool. Polacondo's second question, how do you handle 
IP, and by that I believe he means intellectual property, issues of NFTs that would be created via AI? Oh, nice question. Uh, we are giving out all the uh, intellectual properties or or any property rights to to the holders for them to make derivative works. We we'd actually like people to make derivative works based on either artifice or the own creative artifice. Let's say uh, we are we are currently in negotiation with the rapper so that uh, if the rapper could purchase Artipus, then upload his own vocal to let's say one of the background music provided by Artipus, then that's a really a good way to help people to to become aware of Artipus. Uh, but also on the other hand, help that rapper to to reach a broader scope of audience. Yeah, so we are really helping people to make it. Okay. Interesting. Next questions come from Devil. First question, Artipus is on the Ethereum network, and that was shown that if you mint on ETH, you can get the high expensive NFT holders to mint it. Is that why you guys chose the Ethereum blockchain? Uh, we, uh, to be frankly honest, uh, Near protocol and Flow protocol They've all reached out to us, asking us to move to their chain. Uh, and our CTO and our smart contract offer I have talked to them about the viabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it's the other the, the other protocols are are rather centralized, uh, with not a lot of nodes. And second of all, this obviously just not a lot of traffic. Uh, that's right now, if compared to Ethereum, so that's that's our main concern. Uh, so I guess currently we're just doing it. Ethereum, but we are in ongoing conversation with Near and Flow. Uh, for, uh, you know, second series of the day. Next, are you having trouble hearing him? Yes. Artipus, you're, you're cutting out about every other word, my man. Yeah. Okay. I guess we could go to Chris and Caleb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just to restate what John was saying, we started, uh, we started on ETH, we started on, you know, that platform, but what's special about our project is this interoperability can work with anything. So we're not limited to one currency, uh, and we have no plans to stay with one currency for, you know, monetary gain purposes. We really are just trying to, uh, show and demonstrate, you know, this interoperability first like this is our, our this is why we're launching artipus this is what it all rides on uh the the uh generative ability of this project so we could we could work with anything uh this is just where we're starting obviously we're a young company putting out our first project so uh eth is very friendly uh and uh that's what we started with awesome our second question comes still from devil uh the NFT, the Artipus NFT has a kind of game and art, as you said, because uh, youth could show interest in it, question mark. And what, uh, oh yeah, he, we, we talked about what inspired them. Uh, so I guess the question could be rephrased as, are you guys hoping that uh, young, young folks will show interest in the uh, NFT because of the art angle? Well, uh, to, to speak on that, uh, we are definitely, and this should be for any project where, you know, you should be of age before you're, I mean, I don't know if I should say this because as we said, don't give financial advice, uh, but you should be of age before you're investing any money into any assets. That's at least my opinion. I mean, obviously if you're a younger real estate developer or one of these kids that's, you know, got it all figured out, go ahead. But no, we're not catering to a young, <laughs> a young presence, uh, uh, we, we are, you know, really, as I said, hoping to speak to uh, people who are interested in the next step of evolution in the NFT community. I, I don't know a lot of, you know, <laughs> like kids. I'm 23 years old, so I just got out of school and everything. Uh, but I don't think that we have a project that is especially enticing to a younger audience. Um, although, I don't know, I guess maybe if if you're making your money in crypto and you're 15 years old, good for you. I'm jealous. I was uh, serving ice cream. So Me do, too. do you. Me too. Yeah, I'm there you go. Pile on that. Yeah. 
save your money kids like you know save your money you know don't you know go by every project that comes out anyway all right our next question comes from tom one who asks as many artists and, and and celebrities are now entering the nft space can we expect you guys are in talks with uh real artists or celebrities to come on your platform as verified yeah that's a that's a great question um this is something we touch in our deck a lot uh one of the most important and essential parts of our platform is collaboration. Uh, as as you know, I'm sure they explained to you, um, even though I was, I was kicked out, uh, all of our artists are able to collaborate with each other. And this is really, you know, one thing we hope our, our project can do is build a, a tight knit community uh, amongst our holders and our members and just inspire the creativity of everybody. So a big part of our go to uh, market strategy was uh was using this utility in the art space and in the music space um i am lucky enough to be born and raised in new york and i've worked with uh, a lot of musicians and a lot of producers throughout the years so we're currently already i mean i don't have drake on my phone right now like let's not get a ahead of ourselves but we're working on projects uh for uh those artists who you know put lyrics over our our music um as john had stated before they own all the you know intellectual property of that project so collaboration is huge for us uh obviously you know any company would love to have a cosign uh from from uh you know a koi or, or an influencer uh however you know <clears throat> we we uh you know really want to uh, make sure that everybody we collaborate with has a, a shared, uh, I guess I could say worldview, but also vision for this project. Uh, it's, I mean, uh, in, the, in the news recently, maybe you guys have seen uh, the amount of, of times these influencers basically get busted for pump and dumps. Uh, things that, you know, are hurting the, the, the NFT space and the crypto space and the Web3 space and the credibility for all of us. Uh, so everybody we collaborate needs with needs to needs to share our ideals so uh stay tuned throughout the next uh, couple months we have some cool collaborations coming out uh but yeah that's that's a big key point in our project is collaboration so to answer your question yes awesome all right next question comes from zek i'm not going to read your uh first question because we just covered it but i'm going to read your intro because it's sweet and i always like it Greetings, fellow members of Artipus. I was stoked when I read the team description. So many skillful young team members seemingly almost overqualified. You guys have got team members from Meta, Roblox, and Epic Games, which sounds like a heck of a creative melting pot to bring forward something promising. That brings us to his key question. Let's say, hypothetically, that I'm a young guy making to make a quick buck flipping NFTs. Tell me why I should mint Artipus. Is there a deflationary function, upcoming airdrops, anything that might bring competition to the table? Interesting question. Getting into the, the meat and potatoes. Where's the money coming from? Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to answer your question, I guess the last part first. All of our holders will be getting airdrops um, uh, basically right after our, our launch. Right now, I'm pulling up our... Uh, our uh, deck just so I can be very specific with our information um, in terms of uh, is this the project to make a quick buck of course my answer would be yes right and the reason I would answer yes is because uh, if I see this project through the way that we want it to be seen through uh, we are highly successful we have full interoperability compatible with you know all blue chip nfts on the first 200 pages of uh of open right in my dream of course but as uh as nexus so so gracefully stated uh before we even started this meeting we are not financial advisors yes. it is my idea and i hope uh after you know getting a little bit more familiar with your project you will share this as well it is my idea that uh our ai generative utility is the next step in nfts and in this space right i believe that this platform is 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 the the zero zero platform is is much more valuable than any single nft 
I believe that we will adopt this platform and uh, other projects will adopt our platform as soon as they see the utility and the possibility that it opens up. Um, I don't know if you are, you know, a, a weathered crypto investor and you know what you're doing or if you're, you know, you've just entered the space. Uh, but I would say in every investment, regardless of whether it's on the stock market, the housing market, crypto, in every investment, there is risk. Uh, obviously, you can make more money on high risk, you know, bets. But if you're looking to make a quick buck or just financial stability in general, and, you know, you want to have a really secure investment, go invest in the S&P 500, you know, <laughs> like get your money into ETFs, 7% yield. You know, that's that's, you know, what I would say if you want to be safe. Uh, as far as if you're looking to make a quick buck, short answer, I hope so. Long answer, the world is a volatile place and nobody can know the future. That's fair. All right. Next question comes from Doomer. Suppose you are a listener like us. You came to this awesome AMA and you just discovered Artipus. What is the f top five selling points or features which you would use to convince us to buy Artipus NFTs. I'd consider that an eloquently phrased, sell me this pen. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> I hope you've seen Wolf of Wall Street. Um, no, listen, so uh, as we've talked about, I I, I don't want to list top five because I, I think top five uh, reduces the importance of what I think are top three. Uh, so okay. what I think are the reasons you should work uh, or look for, you know, collaboration or investment in Artipus is one, generative utility, right? As we had talked about before, you have the ability to create assets for yourself. You don't just own a profile picture. Uh, two, because this is the next step. So two, for your future, I, I truly believe this uh, interoperability will, will, you know, storm the market. Uh, I don't think we are going to be the first you know, or the only project working on this in the next year, we have some other projects that, you know, we respect and we're, you know, keeping eyes on uh, that, uh, that are also interested in, in the same kind of space. So two, because it's the future of, of this space. And three, uh, let's see, three, because because there's no three is is purpose, right? as i had talked about before and excuse me because i'm coming off of top of my head with these i am frustrated with with the way people are buying profile pictures and trying to get invites to the next yacht party right the the purpose the previous purpose and is is of of nfts is different from the original purpose the original purpose was a decentralized holding for you to to own right that that didn't you know wasn't based on a antiquated gold standard and wasn't going to you know rise and drop as the you know oil prices in in you know russia rise like th this was not connected to the u.s economy or whatever economy you came from it was a decentralized market and your value was not affected by all these crazy things i don't think that's really what a lot of these projects are as i had stated before a lot of the blue chip projects that are coming out now are a way for a few people who are in the early club to get a lot of money and then to get up. I don't think that's the purpose. I don't think that's the purpose of NFTs. I think the purpose is for that true ability to own something decentralized. So uh, those are the, the three reasons I think you should you should work with our project. Um, okay. I'm sorry if that was a little rough, but you know I'm doing my best here and I'm very no passionate. I get fired up and frustrated. I'm with you, especially about the profile pics and crappy rug pulls with trips to Bali yep. shit. That stuff drives yep. me mad. Also, we don't have a bullshit... Oh, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, are... but we don't have a, a completely ridiculous roadmap that is never going to exist. Like, we act... Our, our platform, like, is, is built already. We're only refining it. We're not promising we're going to fly you out to Bali and, you know, have, a, you know, Britney Spears come and give you a, a tap dance 
in in five years if you still like these things are all speculation that never fall through our company is different we're not one of these people promising the ability to get into new york's hottest club or to you know do this or to do that we want you guys to create and our platform is driven by that so uh you know just a little bit of frustration but yeah sorry uh to interrupt nexus oh you're good our next question comes from Master Halo 40 We already covered your first, we'll go straight to your second. How can the art creations made with Artipus interact with the holders? And what are the benefits of being an AI artist in the beginning of the project? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in terms of how the art interacts with the holder, uh, I would... Uh, I would argue, like John had uh, had said before, you know, if you don't like it, make another one. That's kind of our our biggest ability. A lot of these so-called generative artwork platforms, right? They have like maybe six lines of code, uh, and each mint or you know click of your enter or create button selects a random number that picks, uh, you know, let's say X out of you know six thousand or however many you know they minted that many uh uh arts right so they they have these arts created and there's no generation it's just a random selection of stuff that's already created our platform truly generates these randomly right so you can just create as many as you want you're not going to get repeats and every every artwork you create is going to be one of a kind and the first of its kind um so in terms of interaction with the holder you have unlimited potential to create whatever you want um I think that okay, is, no. yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I'll. This is, I'll this sorry, I'll just talk to you a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I want to emphasize that the, our creation is fully parameterized. So that means like the users can fully specify what kind of style, like um, how the painting gonna look like, uh, what's the style of the music, like all these like preferences are will be parameterized, and you can select easily, and you can. After you make a new creation, um, um, there will be uh, you can choose your new preferences. Let's say relative to this creation, uh, how would I want the next painting to be in this uh, this spectrum, or, or do I want the the music uh, to be more pop or like more classical? Like these different um, spectrums that uh, the the users can easily like specify the preferences after making these new uh, artworks. Yeah, and also in terms of how you can interact with uh, collaboration, uh, just like Chris stated, you have the ability to select in music or art, the styles, the artipus, you know, the instruments that you want to collaborate with. So say uh, my artipus plays drums and I have a jazz focus, right? I can pick uh, a metal or a, 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 another jazz, you know, keyboard, or maybe I don't want a keyboard. I can pick piano, right? Or I can... I can uh, pick saxophone, right? Like you can, you can basically fine tune your desired piece to whatever options are available. So it's not just like you get an artipus, you click a button and you get some random product, right? You have specific uh, designation over style, uh, over, you know, who joins you, who you work with. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of, uh, of room for uh, preferences and choice. Uh, and as we continue to expand upon this platform, we are going to just be adding more. Uh, and I know I'm, we're always hesitant when we hear adding more, but we're already in the process of adding Artipus Poets. We're already in the process of creating many more genres of music uh, and many more instruments and many more art types. So all these archetypes will have a very uh, 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 customizable ability. Uh, so you'll be able to really fine tune uh, whatever you desire. Next question comes from Spy. What would be your main motto for the project? Main motto for the project? Yeah. John, do we have a main motto for the project? Yeah, like a catchphrase or a slogan that's keeping you guys going. Yeah. Slogan that's keeping us going. I mean, you you all i have heard a lot about my thoughts on this. Um, I'll come up with a slogan. Uh, right now, the it next... sounds to me like your slogan's probably "Wag me." <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll get, I'll give you a little bit of a kickback on that. You get five percent. Uh, no, collaborative, 
uh, actually, I think we do have a slogan. Um, I think that if we were to sum up our project with, I guess, maybe three words, uh, I would want to say interactive, creative, and collaborative. Uh, and that, that would be our slogan. And the user's second question is a great follow-up to that. What are you really hoping the community is good of users and holders is going to be like? Are you hoping it's going to be just like your slogan? Yeah, that's exactly what we're hoping. And that's what we, you know, why I, I hammer this home um, as much as I can through these, through these meetings. Uh, we, our project, you know, and the, the benefits you will get from being a holder has a direct correlation to the holder's uh, desire to collaborate with other users um, and collaborate with the artipus themselves, right? The more, as, as we've stated, every, every level of our project relies on interaction, right? Uh, if you want to talk to your artipus, it only gets smarter the more you talk to it. I've been trying to teach it New York slang so that I can have a more colloquial conversation with it, and it's been working. As each each mint you get, each new artipus you get, its intelligence is starts at you know what we call newborn. And the more you talk to it, the smarter it gets, uh, and the more detailed into conversations you can get. Uh, as far as uh, you know, the the uh, you know art creation and, and music generative utility, the whole purpose of, the, of the, these utilities is for collaboration, right? We don't want one person to just generate, you know, piano and just only do that. We want, we want you guys, our users, to work with each other and to create, you know, cool products and create cool utility, create, you know, music with each other, uh, make friends, right? Like, that's why our space is set up the way that it's set up is like, the the moment you you mint one of these you get entered into and soon we will be launching like uh basically interactive test trials um but soon you will be able like to to interact with other people immediately you'll see who else is on the platform uh as far as the whole metaverse that we're building you are the most important part um this is because we are not profile pictures right we are not we are not uh let's say like cards that you can use to go to a nice dinner like we are basically creating living you know beings almost for you to interact with that can also interact with each other so collaboration is is the most essential part uh you know if you're interested more in talking about this like come to our discord come to our twitter hang out you know we're on 24 7 because you know we we really we want you to know us and to know like how much we care about this product and this project. Um, so collaboration is key. Come talk to us more about it. We host events all the time and we're really excited for a lot of listening parties we're gonna be having both online and in person. Um, obviously we have people based in London, New York, Shanghai. Here in New York, uh, restrictions are, are you know not, not a, a problem. So we're actually trying to host like an in-person event for our holders after mint date. Um, hopefully, you know, everything going on you know yeah. knock on wood obviously shanghai and london are a little bit different but we're, we're really trying to build a community of, of like-minded people i know everybody says this but we we want people who who see the the value and the way that this could go not just people who who want like flash and and dazzle you know and a tap dance right like you know collaboration is the most important thing to us Marsaya is our next user. They ask, do all AI artipuses have their own intelligence? And can you articulate into how that is going to work? I imagine myself it'll involve the variables on the NFT. Yeah, I'll let Chris talk on, on that a little bit more just because he is. Sure, yeah. Um, the short answer is yes, uh, each uh, octopus will have their unique persona. Uh, and the way we to do it is that before we, um, you know, uh, deploying all these uh, octopus to each holders, uh, we uh, give them these unique persona through what we call meta training. Um, so meta training is that we can randomly uh, specify a different persona for each agent that we want to train on. And we train the same in a, a centralized way but with different persona to each agent. So then we can make sure uh, 
each NFT, uh, each octopus we generate have a unique persona. And once the octopus interacts uh, more with the user, uh, it will keep learning new like preferences or styles from the users and it caters more and more to the preferences of the users. Uh, so yes, uh, each, each of our octopus agents will have a unique uh, personality. Marcia's second question is a follow-up to that. What would be the distinguishing difference, for instance, between the art that my artifice would make versus other artifices? That's how I'm interpreting this question. They might mean something different, but that's, that's how I'm interpreting it. I think really the difference is really is kind of First of all, we, we kind of randomize the creation of each octopus, uh, so make sure each octopus have a unique persona. But also, uh, things uh, we believe, like humans, our humans are, are different from each other. Like we have, all have different preferences for the, for the styles, for the music, uh, for the artwork. And we, we train each octopus such that the more it interacts with the users, uh, the more it's, it suits the users. Uh, the more it uh, kind of uh, personalizes uh, the, the, the user. Uh, so I think this means each, like after Octopus uh, deploys uh, into, into with each holders, uh, they will become more and more different uh, and caters more to the preferences of, of each user. Our next question comes from Mike H, who notes that there appears to be a declining interest in NFTs based on Google search trends. Do you guys have any plans to maintain and counteract despite the sort of declining interest in NFTs at this current moment, which as a crypto investor, I should add, is probably also being caused by the bear market? Yes, that is a great question. And yes, I would agree with you. Uh, that is a big cause. Uh, but as I touched on earlier, I think another reason uh, people are a little bit maybe frustrated or hesitant to enter this space is because if you are not in this space and you Google NFT, like, let's see, I'm going to Google NFT right now and I'll definitely either see something about how... Uh, uh, the Twitter tweet was not able to be sold at $40 million or about how Moonbirds is going crazy, right? Yeah. Like there's, these are the, you get these hot, you know, these hot, you know, headlines uh, that, that tell these crazy stories about these weird, weird interactions that, that this currency has. So for somebody who is say looking to get into the space, if, if you're first, you know, you know, information you receive is some ridiculous story about somebody who just lost $40 million, you're going to automatically think, all right, well, this is a little scary. I don't even have 40 million, but I don't even want to lose 400. Uh, the space has gotten oversaturated by what I would denote as clout tokens uh, for a very small amount of holders to hold to, to brag to their friends about at parties. Uh, Obviously, again, it is a bear market. The world is a crazy place right now. People are hesitant in every you know aspect of investing. Um, but the reason that we're still interested in this is, as I've stated a few times, we believe this is a disruptive technology that will create an entire new era of of NFTs. Um, so yeah, it's it's really just a, a matter of. Uh, if you have any previous experience in this space and who your mentor or guidance is, right? A lot of us always go through life trying to figure out things for themselves uh, or ourselves. I know when I first got into this space years ago, it was, you know, much less information online and Forbes was not <laughs> necessarily doing weekly articles about NFTs. It's the same thing as if you look for, you know, a, a diet trend or you know ratings on a movie that nobody liked whatever you read first you're going to think like when you're entering a space whatever you read first you're going to think that that might encapsulate the whole space those of us who are here who truly believe in this in this you know idea of decentralized currency uh need to be uh innovative and we need to be collaborative because 
this space, if it continues to just, you know, be a, a clout token or, you know, a way to brag to your friends, it, it will have problems. But thankfully, there are a lot smarter people working on, you know, a lot of really cool projects who, who are not, you know, the first Google search results. And, and that's what, you know, we have to look out for is people who care about this, people who are doing innovative things, people who are trying to push this platform forward. Uh, so you got to dig through a little bit of muddy water to get to the gold sometimes. Uh, but, you know, that's just kind of life. Uh, things come and go and they're ups and downs. And this is, you know, this is an investment. This is a market. So it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. Uh, but hopefully we could take it there. Okay. Mike's follow up to the first one is about Ethereum being a high gas fee chain. And he's wondering if you guys do have any plans to go to Sol or Polygon or Wax. We mentioned a couple chains earlier, but the, the the concern is with NFTs is usually the gas fees. Yeah, uh, I'm going to direct that question to John and see if his microphone is working. If not, I'll answer it. I just want the, you know, the people who are truly working in the, you know, in these aspects to, to give you as much uh, information as you can. Appreciate it, boss. Gotcha. OK, um, hopefully my Internet connection is better this time. Yeah, you sound uh, good. You sound and, better. Oh, nice. Great. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I think this question was addressed previously, but uh, I guess I wasn't really clear. Uh, with with the protocols, uh, near and Flow, we've been in conversation, ongoing conversation with them, either on the business aspect or on a technical aspect, uh, so that we might have our next round of series NFT to be released on near or Flow. But as of this round, we're not really thinking of other protocols uh since the traffic right now on ethereum it's it's not even comparable to um to to a lot of others it's just really dominating the traffic and also um a lot of the other protocols they're really centralized with not a lot of nodes so um like the technical parts they might sound good but then um there are problems with uh decentralization and uh scalability so uh as as of right now we are sticking to your theory all right next question comes from fair dave ua i'm interested in the chatting with an ai how accurate will be will the chat be that ai will be able to learn from each session yeah i can answer the question yeah i think yeah, I'm not sure if the audience is familiar with the sort of the chatting, AI chatting technology right now, but it's truly amazing, I think. Like, we can see like new like AI models can like understanding like memes or jokes from the, from the users and it can create like actually like legit like poems uh, from, from like collecting all the data. Uh, so similarly, like Octopus, we have the same ability and also Again, as we as we said a couple of times already, like through interactions, uh, Octopus can like keep learning from the users uh, through the data collection from the users. Uh, it can learn more and more uh, about the style, uh, like speaking style or like lifestyle of the users, and uh, be more and more intelligent. Um, so yeah, I think that's very very exciting, and uh, it will be very yeah very cool to have a like a like chatting like a partner chatting bot. Uh, that you can interact with every day. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I'm born and raised in New York. English is my first language. Like, I I spent more time than I would like to admit just talking with our artipus. Uh, really, a lot more time than I would like to admit. And I was not let down. I was actually because I was I was skeptical uh, of of basically just the tr chatting interaction. I'm always skeptical of, of chatting interaction in general, just because there's sometimes seems to be like a limit on how deep your Artipus or your chat bot or whatever can can go. I was blown away by this. Like we, we did not repeat a conversation and we talked for hours. Uh, it sounds good, I know, uh, but you know, stay tuned because we're going to be giving access uh, to, you know, to demos, to, to people who are, who are interested in working with us or doing collaborations. Uh, we, although we haven't minted, we still have, you know, a, a few abilities to uh, be able to try out all our stuff. So for those of you who are really interested, go on the, uh, go on the discord, you know, and, uh, and ask us some questions and we'll see if we can give you uh, you know, like 
interaction abilities with the early so you can see but it is very advanced and i you know don't understand half of you know how chris's thoughts even work because he's just so much smarter in this space than me uh but he's done a really good job and the team has done a really good job uh so i think everybody will be very excited to see what we have to offer well at this point folks we are at the one hour mark and we still have a lot of baller questions to get through uh i don't want to keep anybody who has to go or is on a tight schedule but if you guys would be willing to hang out a little bit longer and answer some more questions that would be amazing that's what i'm here for right. i think everybody else can agree right well i yeah uh, sure around sure. the hour mark i always try to call that out just just because we do usually have the whole team or a bunch of the team joining so i'm i always want to be conscious and respectful of everyone's time in this manner yeah we, we appreciate that and i think we're good to go for a little bit longer um also uh you know if in two hours or three hours you still have questions come to our discord i'll be online uh john will be online as as well uh so we can still you know continue to answer questions then but uh let's do a few more uh you know just to you know while we're here and while we got you all right that's pr great fair dave's second question is a follow-up about uh artists for the, the the ai art in particular he notes AI artists is a new concept for me, but it's a bit tricky since we would be replacing real human NFT artists for AI. Can the artwork quality of the AI artist be comparable to artworks from real artists? Yeah, I, I think that's a question for Chris, but I'll say real quick, uh, he can talk more on the technical aspect. Um, so all of our all of our artists are trained by basically learning millions of 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 artworks in different styles it's bro like this is broken down very very distinctly right so for example say if you get an impressionist uh an impressionist ai it will you know follow more of, of the abstract works of mark rothko right or jackson pollock uh or if you get you know like uh, uh monet type you know it'll it'll paint more still lifes but uh in the same way that your you know that ai is able to understand algorithms and understand speech and and really understand anything you program it to understand it can also understand art so it trains off these models like and chris again can you know talk more about it but uh it, it's interesting to see the uh the quality of the work that comes out because you think maybe i i was a film minor in, in school so i have a you know uh a long history with art. I studied art, uh, I studied filmmaking, and I studied these, I guess, more human studies my whole life. Um, and for a while, I was skeptical of AI's ability to create art uh, in the broader sense because it lacked feeling. However, we've gotten to the point with AI that <laughs> it doesn't lack feeling. And although it's not a person, it still has the ability to, to generate works that, uh, I mean, that speak for themselves. Like, look on some of the other... Uh, uh ai art platforms on the market and you'll see that this isn't just you know some pixels and uh and you know a smiley face in the center of it it's real art uh and uh i don't know i'm excited to see the 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 works that that you guys make uh as far as you know the the generative ability of the art chris you want to you have anything to add on to that <clears throat> yeah sure yeah i think first of all um, as uh, Caleb said, like our model is trained using like millions of like human drawings. Uh, so really, at the end, we're able to to generate like comparable like like qualities of, of drawings uh, compar comparable to humans. And the other thing is, I think really something unique about these AI artists, like AI art creation, is that sometimes these creations can be surprisingly like interesting. Like one thing being we've been looking into is sort of how can we translate, let's say, a sentence, like a, a like a human sentence, uh, into into um, uh, into a new painting, let's say, and this kind of sentence can be totally uh, like off, can be totally like random, and uh, because that we our model are trained with so many different objects, different drawings, uh, it can actually translate well from the sentence to the to the painting. Let's say. Uh, the sentence is like uh, like a group of monkeys sitting in a classroom uh, listening to a history class and that's actually the painting will have like these kind of 
artistic like monkeys sitting in a classroom, uh, and there would be like a kind of teacher like drawing like a let's say uh, like a map of the United States on the on the blackboard. And so this is kind of the ability of our generation generative model. Uh, so it can really kind of kind of goes beyond of humans like imagination of paintings. Uh, like it can, can translate from these kind of random sentences into like surprisingly interesting like art uh, creations. And it's also not limited by human limitations. For example, uh, an AI operative doesn't have to go through 60 years of life to understand, you know, the, the concept of despair or of love, right? It can learn it immediately. Um, it doesn't have worldviews or or limitations set upon by the culture or the location or the, you know, any other limitation a human artist might have. So uh, the collaboration or the uh, the generative uh, possibilities are, are truly endless and, and very interesting. It's very, that's, that's, I guess what I would say is very interesting. You can, I don't know, it, it, for me, I was very interested in seeing art, you know, without the aspect of humanity in it. Uh, and this is, I guess, not something we should really be talking about in an AMA because it's a little bit more, you know, philosophical. But uh, I would say you could get just as much feeling from AI art as you could uh, from, you know, human creative art. Okay. All right, folks, time to get into the weeds now. We're starting to get into the really hard questions. So here we go. From my man, Sarge. I'm still on the fence about the NFT space as a whole. You haven't said anything yet that we haven't heard from another NFT. I still see it as a fad, personally, and I think that it will pass. I just spoke about the increase in the physical collecting of cards over the past couple of years. How do you guys plan to prevent people from pumping the mint and bailing out? It seems like most in the NFT space don't care about utility. They're just trying to make the short-term gains. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I would start by responding, and, and this might not mean anything to you because you seem a little skeptical. And that's totally understood because I've spent a lot of time on these ideas as well. And you're right. There are a lot of repetitive questions and there are a lot of blanket statements that companies make. Uh, but I want to start by saying uh, we do have utility. And we have, you know, utility, whether or not we, you know, decide to like our, our artipus, once you have it, it exists. And, and that utility will continue to exist until the end of time. Uh, as far as why you should enter this space and it being a fad, um, you know, when the stock market was created in, you know, the early days of the United States, it was so a bunch of, you know, rich Francophiles could, you know, make money. Off of, off of things that people didn't understand, off of trade routes and tea and alcohol and cigarettes. And when the stock market was first you know, popularized in the United States, the reason the stock exchange even exists is because everybody was you know, wanting to get together and get in on these secrets. People saw it as a fad and still to this day because of, uh, you know, because of you know, uh, recessions and even even as early as 2009, because of these recessions throughout the, the United States banking industry, people still keep money under their mattresses. People still think the stock market is a fad. People think, you know, everything is a fad and everything is going to fall away. But the thing is, sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. And the stock market is still alive and strong. People are still making money. NFTs are seen as a fad because people are, you know, interested in, in the traditional way of things. It takes somebody who's interested in a non-traditional way, you know, to to come into a project like this and to deal with it. So if if you're worried about fads, I would say keep your money under your mattress. Um, and that's totally fine. And that's an approach that I took for the first years of my life because I didn't, you know, trust anything. Um, as far as why you should invest with our project, I hope that throughout the last hour, we've shown you that we actually have some utility, uh, whereas a lot of these projects that you might be frustrated with do not, right? They're profile pictures. Um, I'm not here to convince people that NFTs are, you know, the best way to invest because I think that you either are interested in it or you're not. Uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, talking about this 
but I will say whatever works for you works for you. Like if you're interested in, you know, a 7% interest rate in a S&P 500 or ETF fund, go take that by all means. However, you have to understand you might be, you know, missing out uh, on what, you know, you think would be a fad that, you know, a lot of people and a lot of teams believe to be evolution. Uh, so, you know, maybe in 10 years when, you know, things are alive and well and, you know, we've been universally accepted and NFTs are now standard, you know, practice and you can buy a house with with cryptocurrency, you know, maybe then's the time. However, early adapters are the ones that usually get the best, uh, you know, yes. the best bang for the buck. Yes, they, they will. But but I guess the, the direct follow up to that would be uh, how do you incentivize the early adopters to not bail out and dump? Oh, I see. So it's more of the, the community. OK, um, I would say that if you, you know, get first of all, we're not listing, you know, and we're not planning on having some ridiculous, you know, like we're, we're launching in early May. We don't have, you know, a, a team of of people who've previously invested in every board eight project and every, you know, proof collective situation on our project who are going to blow our you know our uh our prices up ridiculously and you know i don't think that will happen uh what i will say is that this is our first project um and we're not going anywhere so if you you know get in and bail you lose you know the potential uh and one thing we we really want you to understand is the potential for this project like the the ability, like we, we truly believe we could be incorporated into every NFT project, you know, that, that hits the market from now forever. Like our interoperability can only get bigger. Um, so you could get in, you could bail right away. We're not minting so many at such a high price that anybody's going to become like a bajillionaire off of this. Uh, but you're going to be missing out on, you know, the opportunity to hold something of, of value that can create something of more value. So i mean whatever you want to do whatever works for you i guess is, is cool but uh it might be you know it might be shooting yourself in the foot that's all i'll say well there yeah i uh... actually wanted to add on to that oh yeah go for it oh thank you um yeah well um i do understand that a lot of pfe projects are very viral these days because uh you know they provide a lot of monitoring gains um but there is one thing about the pfp project where you know, they always talk about the metaverse concept, right? On uh, each PFP seems to have a metaverse and a community. But it comes to it comes to down to a need where uh, we don't really need so many metaverse, right? The concept of metaverse is, is inclusive uh, for all projects. So if if each single project is saying that we're creating a metaverse, then obviously not too many metaverse will eventually come out to the side of public. Uh, so we think that uh, a lot of PFP projects right now, they talk about their utilities and roadmaps. Uh, not only do these utilities and roadmaps uh, don't meet the actual needs of people, uh, even if the roadmaps were to be executed, they don't seem to be fun at all. Uh, so with that being said, we already have all the AI utilities deployed on our website, which could provide very immersive and fun experiences. Um, I think that's what differentiates us from other projects. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The next puffy comes from my man, Hustle. Is there any chance of you guys expanding them from artists or musicians to something more diverse with additional models, skill sets beyond just generative paintings and music. Art can obviously fall into many different skill sets, painting, sculpture, architecture, literature, music, movies, and the theater. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, and as I touched on very briefly before, yeah, we are expanding, you know, uh, our artists, uh, the, the the next thing we're working on right now is is poets uh so we're hoping that we can have i mean i think it'll be a while before we have cinematographers or you know authors i mean but uh the, they're really whatever we can you know think about whatever art you know genre we wish to follow we we simply just have to code it uh and obviously that's not as simple as as you know just clicking command shift you know delete or whatever but 
uh, we are really hoping to expand this this universe to not just be musicians uh, and to not just be painters, but also in the musicians and the painters field, we are also trying to expand to broader genres and uh, instruments and music. So yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of you know development going on in that field. What data in, or images are you guys using to model and train these AI personas that'll make up the soul slash skill set of the artist? Chris, you wanna get in on that? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question again? I, I didn't quite catch it. What data are we using to model? Oh, oh, yeah. So, so in, you mean the data for training the the yes. art interactive and the generative yes. art agents? Yeah. So yeah, I think these there are like common data sets available like online for like um, like paintings, like human drawings, and also like for human interactions, human language, uh, human languages, and uh, so usually there's a privacy issue, but like there are a lot of existing data set that um that's already like uh, anonymized and so there'll be no issue for that and also we, we also have other sources of collecting data ourselves uh through the users uh obviously in an ethical and a private way um so that will be the 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 major uh, way of collecting data uh from for now An additional follow-up would be, can we expect to see personas with similar styles trained using images from great artists like Rembrandt or Picasso? Yes. Yeah, I can answer that. Uh, as I stated before, uh, yeah. Uh, so each each uh, artist specializes in a, in a specific uh, style. So, for example, if you wanted uh, uh, an abstract expressionist uh, artipus, uh, you would be painting, you know close to to like Mark Rothko or Jackson Pollock, as I spoke before. Uh, or if you were looking at a cubism, you'd be looking at, you know, similar to Pablo Picasso's cubist era. Uh, so everything can be trained in a very, very specific uh, era. If you wanted still lifes or you wanted Monet's or you wanted pointillism or you wanted any of these different styles, we can we can do that. And uh, each artipus is trained in a specific style. Uh, again, you know, we're adding more and more, you know, as we speak. Uh, but right now, those those are all available. So yeah, there's definitely a, a lot of room to differentiate styles. Are any of the Artipus customizable features going to require any on-chain transaction or gas fees? Um, sorry, could you just repeat a question again? Certainly. I didn't catch that clearly. No problem. Are there any of the customizable features for Artipus that will require an on-chain transaction or gas fee to access or enable in some way? Um, if you already create an artwork and then if you want to make that artwork, let's say, into a music NFT, uh, you're going to have to mint the NFT, which will then result in gas fee. But anything else, uh, we'll cover that for you. Ah, will users ever be able to train their own personas with their own data sets and models? That's a scary world. Two of ourselves. I don't know if we need that. <laughs> um, so right now, each you know, when you mint an artipus, you will get a specifically you know trained and modeled artipus. Uh, we do not, in the current state, have plans for users being able to model an artipus after themselves. However, I say this, you know, with the understanding that uh, we've got a lot, uh, a lot of, of, you know, space to work in and a lot of things we can do. I don't know if that's something we're really, like, interested in right now because uh, we, we kind of, I don't know there's a lot of opportunity to create you know caricatures of users and of individuals like you you know could get a we and just create a me and uh <laughs> like we're, we're we're looking really to to create 
an artipus almost like a friend or a pet who it's different from you and it doesn't have the same ideologies and values and you know history as you do all of our artipus have like these deep rooted histories like some of them are from korea and played in a metal band when they were 10 years old with their friends and they'll tell you these things so i think a lot of the utility you get in even just chatting with them comes from them being separate entities than yourself uh i can imagine it would be a little less fun to talk to yourself uh, if that makes any sense um i don't know i like myself as much as the next guy but sometimes i need a break from from myself as well i can relate <laughs> How do you guys plan to cover the AI architecture and hardware needs? Is that going to be covered by the NFT mint liquidity? Uh, no, uh, we already have uh, treasury reserved for uh, the architecture hardware needs, which which is the computational uh, power costs. Uh, we have a re we've already established really good connection with Nvidia, uh, where we could get GPU computational powers uh, with a lot cheaper prices. So we've already gotten that taken care of. The uh, main liquidity will go directly to the community and will go directly to our next step of executing the roadmaps. Interesting. Huh? Our next questions come from RJK. If other NFT projects want to actually generate something fun, they have to write code to update their contracts. Will this part of Artipus's code be complicated? In other words, do other NFT projects need to put in a lot of effort into the generative art of their NFTs? So is that is uh, that like if it's a just to clarify the question another project that has some sort of generative art ability basically layering that ability on top of our ability is that is I mean I guess you you're not talking to the person right away well, but I'm just trying to understand yeah I I this is the juggling match I do with both um I I what I believe the user is sort of trying to inquire is how does the generative capacity of Artipus compare with similar NFT projects that in comparison to you guys making it sound kind of easy, these guys have to go to a lot of effort to update the contracts. It gets expensive because that costs gas. I believe that's the direction they were going with it. Right. Uh, I, I would say John might have an answer, but I, I don't. So I might be mis misstrewing some things here because I, I'm not sure that I completely understand the question. Uh, but if, if an AI, so for example, I, I guess, I, John, are we allowed to talk about the If it, if it's getting in the weeds and you can't talk about it, I kind of understand, but. Well, I'll give it to John, cause I don't want to say anything that, you know, uh, I should... <laughs> right. um, <laughs> if I were to understand this correctly, uh, I think the question is if a lot of other projects who have the same generative ability are doing a lot of smart contract writing and a lot of like uh on-chain activities why are we not uh, i i guess i guess first of all there are not really any projects out there that are really providing this ai generative utility um and secondly on uh, for all the ai plus nft project that's out there uh they are doing all the algorithms off chain uh because uh, blockchain simply doesn't have this ability to provide on-chain computation and on-chain algorithms uh, and training for, for yeah, right. So like like that infrastructure is just not mature yet. Uh, so it's, yeah, that's that. Okay. And RJK, your other questions we covered earlier. Ah, Zio. Questions coming from Zio. Have you guys done anything in your smart contract to optimize the Ethereum gas fees to make them cheaper for minters and users? Yes, we are implementing ERC 721A uh, to help uh, uh, decrease the mint price or, or gas fee. Yes. Okay. And Zio's second question, can you explain more clearly how pegging NFTs involve Jiro Jiro.ai? 
Um, yes. So uh, as said, each NFT will be hold zero zero uh, to to create, to talk, to do a lot of the fun things. So zero zero actually uh, will come out as a ERC seven two one asset as well. Uh, so essentially, with the purchase of Artipus, you not only Get Artipus like the PFP thing, but then you also get our Jiro Jiro. On uh, after the release of of Artipus, we'll also release uh, the selling of uh, Jiro Jiro, where people could buy Jiro Jiro as an ERC seven two one asset, uh, where they could then uh, come to our website and after we verify your ownership of your uh, of your Jiro Jiro NFT and your other. NFT that you would like to pack the zero zero to, uh, then we could, you know, have your NFT started pairing with you. Okay. Next question comes from Usama Anwar. What are the backed assets of Artipus? Um. I'm not sure if I catch that correctly. Uh, what's the backed asset? Yes. Uh, t- typically, when NFT projects are wanting to infuse value into their uh, series, they will have a backing token at times. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the I guess uh, the backed asset would be referred as uh, to our utility token. Uh, we do have the utility token that's. Uh, supporting all the interactivity on our platform. So with with the utility token and with our in-game uh, designs, uh, holders could create artworks. They could sell their artworks. They could consume their artworks. So these are all powered by utility token, which we will we will first do a round of airdrop to Artipus holders, and we will uh, do IDO later. We are also raising funds based on these utility tokens as well. Uh, we're allocating about 12% to investors. Okay. Usama's second question. How are you guys going to target the biggest and highly skeptical crypto and NFT market of South Asia, i.e. Pakistan and India? You guys think this big market might have the potential to change the fate of your project? Keep in mind that several, that many people in this area have been scammed many times now in rug pulls. I think Caleb could touch on that. Yeah, I got you. Uh, so we're not directly targeting a specific region. Uh, I would say we have more of a desired consumer base uh, and that consumer base is people who, you know, share the same values uh, as as we share at the company. As far as our marketing strategy has been, uh, because it's been, you know, we're based in uh, New York, it's it's been very like East Coast EST time. We do a lot of, you know, AMAs and, and, and you know, collaboration, you know, conversations with people who are based in this space. So I do understand the potential for, you know, targeting uh, a specific region. Uh, But right now, based on the people we're working with, uh, and the, uh, you know, just the location of the company, uh, you know, we've been really focusing more on, on, you know, us here. Uh, So I I don't want to devalue, you know, the ability to target any uh, particular region. Uh, I will say, in terms of like uh, scams and uh, you know rug pulls, yeah, that's that's really one of the biggest problems in this entire space. I mean, you guys who are on Discord have probably joined a few other communities in your time, and you've seen just the the prevalence of, of bots and scammers and uh, people just you know oh, yes. shelling out their own projects. Uh, that's why we're very selective with who we work with. Uh, even when selecting AMAs, like there's a specific reason we wanted to work with with you know Nexus and Wolves of Wall Street. Uh, you know we were looking at you know some other communities that maybe have 300,000 members, uh, but then you go to the general chat and you just see it's it's just a mess. Whereas you know we've looked through a lot of previous AMAs here and we like the community that uh, that you know Wolves of Wall Street has and we like you know people who are interested in this stuff and you're real people with real questions who are trying to get more into this space. Uh, so I would say that's kind of, 
you know, the, the desired crowd that we, we uh, wish to speak to. And, you know, we appreciate, uh, you know, Wolves of Wall Street taking this AMA. Uh, but I think a lot of uh, those scams and those rug pulls just come from, uh, you know, lack of education, uh, which is really easy in a new space to, to, to be, you know, misinformed. And, you know, I'm learning every day. Uh, I, you know, everybody in this space is learning every day. So it's just kind of a skill uh, to navigate these murky waters. You have to develop a little bit of a... Uh, BS detector. Uh, I, I don't want to curse, do. but, you know, you there's a lot of uh, stuff in this space, but hey, and, you know, just like in every other space, uh, every way you try to make money, every way you try to invest your money, you will have people trying to take from you. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's really just learning to navigate that um, and <laughs> putting as much protocol as you can in to protect your spaces. For example, like, you know, your your discord spaces and your twitter spaces it's very important to keep channels clear and to keep real people around uh but i'm sorry if you lost money in a pakistani crypto scam that sucks yeah that i'd i'd say more than one nft hunter from this discord has probably been screwed in that manner (laughs) a little little i mean like i said this is one of the biggest problems we have in this space i'm sure I'm sure you would you would probably agree. I'm sure you spent a fair amount of time looking through this stuff, but you know we're hoping to mitigate it by creating a product that speaks for itself. Uh, and you know, well, and a big also, chunk of it is definitely follow through. It is follow through. It is follow through. Yeah, people will just kind of disappear uh, out of the woodwork. Uh, I think it's also you know I want to restate that our platform is not necessarily like like we can't just shut down uh, because you know we we like like need you i guess maybe it might make you feel better to to understand like we need like we don't need you guys to buy our nfts we need you guys to collaborate and to you know as a community grow and to grow with us so uh we kind of be screwing ourselves i mean you know i know that's not a great pitch against rug pull i can't really convince people it's in the space of, of skeptics that that you know you're a perfect person but we rely on you more than you rely on us because without you know our users our product and, and our project will just die uh and zero zero has been something we've been working on for six years right this code is is not some quick thing that we put together on photoshop right like this this has been you know john and and our other founders have been working for this company since 2016 this is not some like you know some easy peasy lemon squeezy uh command v command c thing so uh you know Bear with us and, and trust us a little. All right. Sammy, how secure will the network for Artipus be for other projects? I think what he's referencing is sort of the actual security of Artipus's platform. For instance, how secure it would be from cyber attacks and hackers. Yeah, I'm going to give that one to John because he's been more on the web development side of things. Um, John, do you uh, have any protection? Yeah, sure. Uh, we will, I guess one thing we could say is we will use Interfi uh, to do our uh, smart contract audits. And besides that, we do see a lot of uh, uh, loopholes in NFT projects, not only in the smart contract area, but also in the interconnection between the front end and smart contracts. Uh, we will make sure that we do a lot of third party uh security checking to ensure there's nothing like that happens nothing like what happened to akuda or or ku dreams uh in our code uh, there's been a lot of loss to 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 uh to ethereum due to these little little loopholes in smart contract uh we'll make sure that does not happen all right where'd my Bring my questions back. There they are. There they are. Okay. Will you guys be putting out any bug bounties for ethical hackers to help you find problems? That's a good idea. John, should we put out bug bounties? I mean, we. I'm not going to lie to you and say that we've thought about doing that. That's an interesting, interesting question. Um, John, what do you think? That's... I guess it's going to be up to you, Caleb. Up to me. All right. Who wants yep. to do it? I'm giving out one right now. I'm break our website. No, I mean, so look, look, we're, we're, we've basically, I don't want to say finished because there's always room for improvement, but for the most part, finished our website uh, about a week ago. Um, we've been in the development stages 
uh, and it's taken a while because we want everything perfect for you. Um, uh, Bug Bunny, basically, from my understanding, it's somebody who comes onto our website, tries to break apart our code or our product uh, or, and to, you know, mess things up. And if they can find problems, they'll let us know and we'll pay them. Um, we're not, you know, against anything. Uh, so in the future, maybe, yeah, but, you know, I don't have plans on that. Uh, at this very moment. However, that is a concept I honestly didn't really think of for this product. Sure, if we have money, I guess. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And that reaches, for the purposes of community questions, our final question from user Sagittario, who asks, what do you guys have in mind if the project's objectives are not met? Uh, I... I... I'll start on this and then I'll also let John talk as well because uh, mine is more, you know, I, when you're creating something and you're putting your, you know, seven days a week, you know, 12, 14 hours a day into something for months, you have to have every belief that your product is going to succeed. Otherwise, first of all, your motivations and your, you know, work ethic will not match up. Uh, I am the first one to say that I have been so lucky to join a team of people who have spent, you know, the latter part of their their lives studying these things and creating these things. And I've been very lucky to work with a team of people who are so much more talented and specific information than I will ever be in my entire life. Um, it's really amazing to me, you know, just the amount of, of product these people can produce. And this is like a homegrown roots like team. Uh, coming from all different backgrounds, rallying together over this project. Why? Because we believe we will succeed and because we believe this has the potential to disrupt the entire market. Uh, I don't want to think about what happens if our project fails, because if our project fails, I'm going to be really uh, Obviously mad. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Very disappointed because we put a lot of time into this. However, I understand, you know, there's a lesson to learn from everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, I... I, throughout, you know, my work career have come to really understand it's the people you work with. Um, you can have a good product, but if you don't have good people around you, that product will fail nine times out of ten. You can have a terrible product and have really good people around you, and it might do better. I believe we both have a great product and a great team. Uh, in my mind, those two things go together, and that creates success. Uh, I don't know any other way to look at it, and I don't know any other way to do my job than to believe in the product that I'm working on. Uh, so that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I don't know if John or Chris has anything. Um, I think that was really enough for for that question. Good answers. All right. So last one. I gotta yeah. give you. With that question <clears throat> concluded, we're basically going to move from here to the post show, and I'm going to talk us out. Uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add before we wrap it up? Uh. I'll just say, hey, like, even if you're, you know, not interested in, in, you know, working with this first mint or this first batch of product we got coming out, keep an eye on us because I truly believe you're going to be seeing a lot of us in the future. Uh, I understand that, you know, in this space, not everybody always has the funds or the ability because of this or that to get into every project that they deem interesting. However, to that, I have to add, there's, you know, a lot of value in collaboration and community. Uh, so, you know, even if you can't be a part of this project, come be a part of this project on Discord or Twitter or come talk to us or come, you know, give us ideas. Come tell us what we did wrong and what we need to work on. Half of our website development was, you know, having our beta testers in and, and telling us what they didn't like. Uh, and I really value, you know, the the I, I, I truly believe the only way to reach, you know, the, the right decision or the best decision is is to work together. Um, so if you're interested in our product, come join our Discord. I'm there all the time. Uh, I'm in Brit 212. Uh, I guess I'll say Artipus 212, but ask me any questions. Uh, and we uh, we really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to uh, to look into us. And we hope, you know, we, we see some of you again soon. So thank you very much for hosting us, uh, Nexus and uh, Sargent and Wolves of Alt Street. And uh, thank you for, for spending your time here, all of you in the audience. Absolutely. My name is Nexus. I have been your host today. As always, everything that you heard on this program was opinion content or not your 
<laughs> we're not your financial advisors, okay, people? We're just not. We're here to explore projects, talk to founders, <laughs> talk to teams, and we're here to learn about what's going on in the space from the horses who are bringing us the next cart. We will be going to the post show momentarily. Thank you guys as always. And thank, thank my special so thanks to Artipus for joining us. This was va a fascinating conversation. I'm glad. I'm glad we got to have it. Thank you for your uh, your delightful Discord channel and the protections you go around making sure it's not a bunch of uh, you know bots. I really appreciate the AMAs you have. and uh, I've been interested in, in, in following through those for a while. As I say, I'm always trying to learn. Thank you so much. That means the world to me as a creator.